If you're building a no-code app on Bubble, chances are you're going to be using plugins in some way, if you aren't already. Now, plugins can be a really fantastic asset for your app because they can allow you to add functionality without actually having to build it. So use plugins correctly, and they can be a huge help. But use plugins incorrectly or choose the wrong plugins and they can unintentionally cause you to have a bloated and poorly performing app. So you want to make sure you're going about this the right way. That's why in today's video we're going to talk about how to choose and use plugins correctly so you can avoid those problems that can come with choosing and using the wrong plugins. Now stick around until the end because we also have a downloadable bubble plugin guide that you can grab, which also walks you through some of our top picks for plugins, regardless of what type of app you're building. I'm Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if you want more on that, then subscribe to our channel for new videos every single week. And today we're going to be talking about when you should be using plugins, how to filter and choose the right plugins, and what to do after you have chosen your plugin. How do you maintain that or make sure that it doesn't cause long-term damage to your app? Looking at when you should even use plugins in the first place. Now, it can be really easy to start building your app, to go over and start browsing through plugins, to see lots of cool features or functions that you could add to your app, and just to start installing all of the plugins. But you really don't want to do that. Be really selective about which plugins you do and don't use. And again, there can be some detrimental effects, which we'll talk about later. But when you are deciding whether to use plugins in the first place, you really want to consider three things. Number one, a plugin is great for adding custom functionality that you can't otherwise natively build within Bubble. So if, you're, if you need a customization and you cannot build that, but a plugin offers it, well, that's a great time to use a plugin. Or if a plugin offers something that is going to save you significant amounts of time and it's something that's really simple, then you can consider using a plugin in that situation as well. But when you don't want to use plugins and when you should really just build a feature yourself is when you can build that feature yourself. Because ultimately, a plugin creates a dependency. Someone else has built a plugin and therefore someone else has to manage and maintain that plugin. When you use that plugin, you are now depending on that plugin and you are also depending on that person who created that plugin. So anytime you use a plugin, there is a dependency there, even if it's just a micro dependency. So if you can build the feature yourself, then go ahead and do that. Now, another thing to consider is whether you should be using APIs to connect to a third party service instead. So for example, you might be able to use a plugin that creates an integration for your app, and you may not have to create that integration yourself simply because you're using a plugin that already offers it. But if you can create that integration, if you can use an API to connect to a third party service instead of using a plugin, well, do that because again, you're in control of that connection because you've created it and therefore you're eliminating that micro dependency on the plugin. There's really no reason for you to use it. So while it can be easy to go in and see all of these plugins that do all of the things that you want to do, make sure you're not just using them because they're there. Be selective about what you use and what you instead build and thus control. If you've decided you are going to use a plugin or multiple plugins, well, now you have to make sure you're choosing the right plugin. Because if you go to the plugin marketplace, there are likely going to be a number of options for the type of feature or function you need within your app. And there are five filters that we're going to talk through now to help you narrow down those options and choose the right one for yourself. So filter number one, one is documentation. Does the plugin have documentation about the setup and use of the plugin? Documentation that's going to guide you through the process of implementing this plugin into your app and using it thereafter. If there is a substantial amount of documentation, that's always going to be beneficial for you as the user because when you're installing a plugin, generally it's up to you to 
make sure you're using it correctly, just like it's up to you to make sure you're using the bubble platform as a whole correctly. So the more documentation you see that goes alongside a plugin, the more helpful that's going to be for you in actually using that plugin. Filter number two would be the number of installs that a plugin has. Now, a couple of the filters we're going to go over you have to kind of take with a grain of salt, but when you look at all the filters together, they can be helpful. So filter number two, the number of installs. You can see how many times a plugin has been used in different people's apps. So the more times a plugin has been used, generally you can assume the more reliable or the better the plugin is. Now, that's not necessarily the case across the board. You can always have new plugins that have been created and just haven't yet had enough time to be installed in lots of different apps. So again, you wanna make sure you are really considering this and don't not look at plugins that don't have a high number of installs, but consider this filter alongside the others that we're going to talk about. Filter number three is the, the plugin review. Is the plugin you are considering positively reviewed? Now, this is another one you're going to want to take with a grain of salt, but obviously the, the more positive reviews you see, generally you can assume the better the plugin is. Now, one thing to understand, and we kind of touched on this earlier, but you know, when you're using the Bubble platform, there are lots of different ways you can use it, and you have a lot of control over the development. You have full control over your development. That means you can use the, the platform correctly, or you can use the platform incorrectly. You can build a scalable, well-performing app. You can build an unscalable, poorly performing app. And the same is true with plugins. If you install a plugin in your app and you don't set it up correctly, well, it might seem like the plugin doesn't work for you, when in reality, you might just not be using it correctly. So when you look at reviews that say a plugin doesn't work, you have to assume that some of them might be because of that. Maybe the plugin just isn't being used correctly. So if you see some positive reviews, alongside some negative reviews, well, that's a good sign because it shows that, you know, some users might have more experience in using the platform and using plugins. And if they've gotten it to work, then chances are it's the plugin is fine, whereas some other users uh, might just need a little bit more practice with the platform and getting those plugins up and running correctly. So consider reviews when you're looking at all of these filters, but take them with a grain of salt. Filter number four is deprecated plugins. Now, when you're using a deprecated plugin, that essentially means that the plugin is no longer supported by the user who created it, or the user who created it no longer has a bubble account. Now, this is kind of a tricky situation. You want to tread softly when you're moving forward in this direction. If you're using a plugin like this, it's kind of stuck in time. You, you, when you're going into it, you're going to already know that there aren't going to be plugin updates. There is not going to be any plugin support. You are essentially use something that is, like I said, stuck in time. So if you ever have an issue, then you know there's not really going to be anywhere for you to go. So while you can use a plugin like this, I would strongly consider if there is an alternative option to take that alternative option because down the road, if you need some sort of a change or an update, or if you need some sort of support, then you might have trouble getting it. So that would be a, a really good filter to put these plugins through when you're considering which ones to use. And filter number five is cost the cost of plugins. Some plugins are free, some plugins are paid, and there are good and not so good plugins that fall into both categories. Now, you need to think about the long-term cost. So if you need a paid plugin, that's going to be something that you have to factor into your overall expenses. But really, you know, you can look at this in a couple of different ways. One is paid plugins are not necessarily better than free plugins and vice versa. It really depends on your needs. If a plugin that is free offers what you need, 
then you know, go for it. You might see a paid plugin that also offers what you need and wonder, is the paid plugin better than the free plugin? Well, sometimes it might just be because that paid plugin comes with um, you know, more robust functionality that you might just not really need. So a free plugin can be a great route to go. But on the flip side, you might be cutting yourself short if you're only looking at free plugins, but you really need something paid. So really, you know, make these decisions wisely based on what they're what return they're going to give you. If you ultimately pay for that plugin, is it going to allow you to get a greater return once you bring users on board your app? Okay, so consider the cost in that way. What is the end result going to be for you? So you've decided whether or not you should use plugins in the first place. You've taken your plugin options through those filters and decided which one you should use. And now you need to think about plugin maintenance. What happens afterwards. Well, as you move forward with your app, generally you want to keep your plugins on the uh, current version. So sometimes plugins will go through updates and you'll see a notification within Bubble that will tell you there's an update available for your plugin. And so generally you want to keep those plugins updated. Now, before you go and make the updates, make sure you know what's included in those updates so that it doesn't affect any of your existing functionality. So always review thoroughly before making any changes so that you don't have to kind of scramble afterwards. So keep things updated, but make sure the updates aren't going to affect anything else in your app. Now, another really, really important thing to keep in mind and really just a best practice with your app is to remove any plugins that you're not actually using. Go ahead and uninstall them from your application. The more plugins you have installed in your app, the more functionality you're technically adding to it. And the more you do that, and especially when you're not even using it, the more risk your app is at for becoming poorly performing or unscalable or, or just having issues. You know, you might start running into issues and not even know where they're coming from. And these plugins that you're not even using, uh, they can be causing problems with your app that you're just unaware of. And to that point, one more tip is if you're ever running into testing issues with your app or you can't pinpoint an error that's happening, then test your app in safe mode, which will allow you to test your app with plugins turned off so you can see whether it is the plugin that is causing the issue or something else. So keep that one in your toolkit as you move forward. Now, if you want our recommendations for the top plugins we prefer using for most app types, then we have a plugin guide that is linked down below. I'll put that link here on the screen as well. You can download that guide. It's going to go in depth on some of the information that we've already gone through today, but also give you our plugin recommendations so that if you are looking for something similar, you can potentially go with what we like to use and come out with the good results that we have as well. And hey, if you found this video helpful, we would really appreciate it if you give it a like down below. It helps us help more people with their apps too. So like the video below, make sure you grab that guide for plugins. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.